So we're going to talk about thyroid. Thyroid was mentioned in the, in the blurb about this, and several of you that are here are probably here because of thyroid stuff, so we're going to talk about that. Um, the common presentation I get in my office, people will come in and say, look, I go through Prevention Magazine, and I answer the questionnaire for hypothyroid, and man, I'm hitting every single one of those things. But I go to my doctor, he draws my blood and says, nope, you're fine, go home. And you think, well, how can I have this whole big, no, you're fine, go home. So the answer is you're both right. And let me explain. In order to diagnose hypothyroidism, they have to prove that your thyroid is not producing enough hormone. Now, you have to look at thyroid hormone production as a cascade of events that start with your body asking for thyroid hormone and end with you having an appropriate amount of the right kind of hormone. But it is not a one or two step process. There are six or seven steps involved in that. It is similar to me being back in college and I'm taking, let's say, biochemistry. Well, I can order the book from Amazon and I can take the test. But there's a lot more in between those two, right? And so you go to your doctor and you say, dude, I'm failing the test. I, I don't know if I bought the right book. I don't know if I'm studying the right material. Whatever. One way or the other, I'm failing the test. When I go through Prevention Magazine, I fail. So your doctor does some blood work, and he looks at usually one hormone, and I'll tell you what it is in a second, but he basically looks at it and says, well, you, you ordered the book, so I, you shouldn't be failing the test. It, you're, you're just dumb. It's not lack of studying. You're just slow, Right. You're one of those students. So, but, but we all know there's more to the equation than if you buy the book, you pass the test, right? So if we look through that cascade of events that goes on with the thyroid, you start with a gland in your brain called the pituitary. The pituitary gland places the order for thyroid hormone. Now, it doesn't make thyroid hormone. It is not the thyroid. But it places the order for thyroid hormone by creating a hormone called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. And most people that have dealt with thyroid issues or thought they had them or tried to get an answer are familiar with TSH. It's probably the most commonly tested hormone for thyroid problems. Keep in mind, I said it is, does not come from the thyroid. So what they do is they look at TSH and they say, well, look, if your TSH level is high, it must be because you're not making enough hormone. If your TSH level is low, it must mean you're making plenty, or you're taking plenty if you're taking thyroid hormone. But to me, that's like, like if I'm going to give Bobby a, a grade in school, and I go to her and I say, look, I'm going to grade you as a student, so I'm going to ask your mom how often she nags you. And if her mom says, oh my gosh, I nag her to do her homework all the time, well, then I'm giving her a D. She's obviously a bad student. And if I'm, her mom says, oh, I never nag her. I never say a word about it. Well, then I'm giving her an A. But we all know that maybe mom's the problem. Mom could be neurotic and won't leave her alone even though she's doing her homework all the time, right? Right? Not that there would be any moms in here with issues like that. But, but you can't negate that. So they look at what the pituitary is doing, and they just infer that the thyroid is reacting accordingly one way or the other. Some doctors are astute enough to look at what the thyroid produces in response to that TSH. Okay, so back to my textbook. If my TSH is decent, okay, I ordered the textbook from Amazon. The better doctors actually look to see on the UPS packing slip if it showed up at my door. Because that's step two, right? Did I get what I ordered? That's T4. Okay, and many people have heard of T4. It's also called thyroxin. Now, T4 is not some mystery molecule. T stands for tyrosine, which is an amino acid, part of the proteins that we eat, and it's got four iodines attached to it. Yeah, that's five. Okay, so it's got four. Four iodines attached to it, so T4. T4 is inactive. Okay, picture that, that Amazon box on my doorstep with my biochemistry book in it. I can take that box inside the house and sit down at the table, turn the light on, and stare at it. Can I get any biochemistry knowledge out of it like that? I've got to do stuff to it. I've got to process that. 
Okay, but that's T4. Now, TSH and T4 have this relationship. If my T4 is low, my TSH should be high, vice versa. Okay. However, there are cases where the pituitary is the problem, your TSH is very low, and your T4 is very low. Because you're not ordering it, therefore you don't make it. There are other times where I, my TSH is high and my T4 is still low. I'm ordering 10 biochemistry books from Amazon because I know that they're likely only going to send me one. Is that an Amazon problem? Is that a bad credit card? Is that because my neighbor steals half my books off my front doorstep? I don't know. It could be any of those. But understand, that TSH and that T4, that's as far as that relationship goes. If you never turn T4 into what you need, but you have the right amount of it, that TSH is going to look correct. Okay, technically, if you make enough T4, you do not have hypothyroidism. The thyroid is doing its job. Amazon sent you the right number of books. Whether you end up with a usable amount of thyroid hormone at the end of the cascade is a whole different issue. You can be low in thyroid hormone, even though the thyroid made enough. I ordered five books, Amazon sent me five books. I ended up with none. Amazon's not the problem. They sent me five books. My UPS guy likes to read. There's my problem. Right? The problem happens somewhere else in the supply chain. Nobody ever looks at that because there's no medication for that. The diagnosis of hypothyroidism is based on a low T4. If you have a normal T4, but the rest that we're going to talk about in a minute is all messed up, you don't meet the requirements for that diagnosis. Therefore, can he treat you? No. Is he wrong at that point in saying that your thyroid's normal? Not really. But that's not what you asked. You asked, why do I feel this way? And he said, your thyroid's normal. Thanks. Why do I feel this way? If my thyroid's normal, what do we look at next? Right? I'm sorry. We look at my next patient next. So, you can, you know. so I want you to understand it's not necessarily because they don't like you. It's because they have a very narrowly defined job. Now, after T4, what happens? Okay? You have tyrosine with four iodines on it. All four receptor sites are taken up. It can't do much. In the cascade here, all... 90 plus percent of that T4 that you produce is bound to proteins in your blood. It's already bound, it's unavailable. But there's a small amount of it that's available to go on to the next step in the cascade. That's what's called free T4. Okay, anytime you have a free hormone, you still paid for the test. The free means that it's available to react. It's not bound to what we call a binding protein. Okay. So some of your T4, a small amount, is available to go on to the next step. Well, the next step is to remove one of those iodines to open up a receptor site so that it can react with your cells. When you remove that iodine, you go from T4 to T3. Now, T3 is active thyroid hormone. That's what you're trying to get enough of. But just like T4, a large amount of that T3 is bound to proteins in your blood. A small amount of it is available to react. That's called free T3. I wish they had called it available T3 because free T3, I mean, the rhyming is just, it's hard for people. Oh, you can test for all that in the blood. Yes, easily. Because it doesn't lead to, a, doesn't lead to that diagnosis of hypothyroidism, so the insurance company doesn't want to pay for that test. Okay? And that's what it is. It's not, it's not that the doctors don't understand the physiology. They're treating you based on what the insurance company says they'll pay for, not based on what it takes to tell you the answer to your question. And that's all the stuff that I did. Yes. Now, free T3, that available T3, with that open receptor site, that can attach to the cells in your body and starts the cascade of reactions that thyroid hormone starts. So, when you talk about the symptoms of not having enough thyroid hormone, Cold hands and feet, can't control your weight, fatigue, poor libido, thinning hair, weak nails, dry skin, constipation, generally, bleh, 
right? I mean, if you had to sum it up, it's just bleh. That is what is undone by thyroid hormone, by free T3. If you have enough free T3, it starts the processes that keep that stuff from happening. You make energy the way you're supposed to, your skin is not dry, your hair is not weak, your nails are not weak, you're not constipated. That stuff happens when you have enough T3. So what I want you to understand is there are people that make enough or take enough T4 that their TSH and T4 levels look fine. But if they can't convert that to T3, you feel hypothyroid. To you, there's no difference. You're not better. But your blood work looks decent. So what do they tell you? You no longer have hypothyroidism. You're cured. I'm sorry you feel like a lazy lump. You must be old. <laughs> or depressed. Or yeah, you're just lazy, right? So, so understand that there, the biggest issue here is there, there is a serious miscommunication. Good question. When you go from T4 to T3, that happens outside the thyroid. So outside the thyroid, you remove that iodine. There is an enzyme that does that, and it is active in two places in the body. 99% of the conversion happens in these two places. There are small amounts of conversion in other places. One is in the liver, and one is in the intestinal tract, provided you have the right balance of normal flora. You've heard of probiotics, right? The activia and all that kind of stuff. If you have the right balance of normal flora in your intestines, about 35% of the conversion of T4 to T3 happens in the intestines. Another good large chunk of it happens in the liver. So what happens if you're taking something like a statin drug that affects your liver? You start to slow your conversion. What if you drink a lot of alcohol? Your liver is busy with other things. It doesn't do that conversion well. If you have a gallbladder issue, if your gallbladder is blocked, your liver's not happy. If your gallbladder's gone, your liver has a harder time getting rid of its trash. Those can all slow your conversion. If your gallbladder is gone, it also affects your intestinal tract because the bile from the gallbladder is a lubricant for the intestinal tract. So that changes the normal flora because you're not turning it over as frequently. Okay? So when I deal with someone that has an issue like an underconversion issue, did that answer your question about where it happens? Okay. When I deal with someone that is an underconverter for thyroid hormone, I'm not treating the thyroid in most cases. I am working to normalize the other parts of their body that allow their body to finally do this job the way it's supposed to. Their body fixes the problem. I just have to get the roadblocks out of the way. 